morning. So, remember last time that we left off talking about the drivers of climate. And the idea here is that it is generally agreed upon that we have this run up recently in temperatures. And the data shows that it correlates very closely, as you can see here in the graph, with the level of CO2, carbon dioxide, in the atmosphere. Now, that is certainly strong evidence that CO2 has something to do with temperature. But as we know, correlation is not causation. So if we shrink down our uh, shrink down our graph here a little bit, okay. So very good correlation, but here's a comic to illustrate the point. XKCD. I'll let you read it, and then we'll move on. And here's another, right? I mean. If all we're going for is correlation, then we have an increase in global warming and we have a commensurate decrease in the number of pirates on the high seas. <clears throat> so perhaps we should all uh, join a pirate crew and then global warming would no longer be a problem. Now that sounds ridiculous on its face and it is ridiculous. But it, it's an extreme that proves the point that we don't want to rely on a correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature that we've reconstructed over history using various proxy methods and with direct measurements in the modern era and conclude just based on that correlation that CO2 is a problem and we need to do something about it. There's a lot of other things that drive, potentially drive climate and we want to examine them. So the factors that we're going to consider are things like latitude and proximity to the ocean and ocean circulations. So, uh, or, oh, ah, <coughs> pardon me, ocean circulations being currents like the Gulf Stream that brings relatively warm water up the coast of the Atlantic the Atlantic coast of the United States and across over to the British Isles. But that's just one example. And that causes a huge movement of thermal energy and drives climate in those regions. Uh, albedo, which is a fancy word for um, how much light gets reflected back out into space from the Earth's surface and atmosphere. Uh, solar radiation and its variations, the sun itself, its output, how much energy it's outputting at any particular moment in time, does go through cycles, and we want to take a look at those as well. You can think about elevation. Elevation has an effect on temperature. As we know, generally speaking, if we go higher up, we're going to have lower temperatures. Atmospheric circulation, similar to ocean circulations, though in the air of the atmosphere rather than the water of the oceans. Topography, so uh, here in the Bay Area, we have a lot of little microclimates that are completely based on the topography, whether there's the presence of hills and how close we are to the ocean and um, whether the ground is reflective or not. Topography has a lot to do with uh, what, what the temperature is and how much rain we get and things like that. Uh, there's also tidal effects. We won't get into those too much, but the idea of the sun and the moon um, dragging water around the earth and how that affects climate, and it does, and volcanic activity. Volcanic activity is kind of an interesting one because we can't really predict it very well, but it is constantly happening. And particularly large volcanic eruptions drive a lot of ash, aerosolized ash, into the upper atmosphere and can increase our can increase the albedo these okay, of the earth by quite a bit 
and that can in turn cause uh, a change in the temperatures across the entire globe, not just locally to wherever the volcanic eruption happened. Now, it doesn't happen with every volcanic eruption, but particularly powerful ones uh, have a big effect on global temperatures, at least in the, uh, the short term. So the one we're going to start with uh, are the ones we're going to start with and concentrate on our albedo and solar radiation and its variations. <clears throat> one, because uh, albedo in particular is uh, nice and simple and explains a lot about the energy balance of the Earth. And a lot of these other factors like latitude and proximity to the ocean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, they have uh, localized effects, but have less effect in terms of regional or even global climate. So uh, we'll look at albedo. It's a nice, simple, straightforward one and uh, explains a lot about what's happening with climate. And solar, ra solar radiation is another one that uh, we'll explore because one, it has a profound effect on climate, but also because uh, in the so-called climate denialist camp, um, it comes up a lot as a possible explanation for all of this temperature increase recently being natural. And it's important to take a look at uh, the variation in the solar radiation and to realize that the climate models, all these computer models that try to simulate the Earth's global climate and make predictions about its future, well, it's important to realize that Everything we know about solar radiation, its variations, is built into those models. Scientists are aware of these things and they're very careful about handling them. So when we come back next time, we'll talk a bit, little bit about albedo and solar radiation. Thanks for listening.